Stuart O'Grady, what an amazing ride by the two Schleck brothers, the entire team. In fact, we saw you doing so much work on the front as well on the early climbs. Just a great team effort today. Yeah, I mean, uh, we had that one in our in our minds for a few days, and um, like you know, like like we've been saying the last few days, it's, it was time for the the gloves to come off and you know and the the boys to unleash the fury and. Uh, yeah, I mean, we had, a, we had a plan and it went to perfection. It's not often that happens. Well, a couple of days ago, going into Gap on the, the final Category 2 climb and then that very tricky descent, Andy and Frank looked a little bit fragile and the talk in the media was, well, gee, they, can they do it in the big mountains? I guess they've answered everyone today, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, the whole point was not to panic. You know, everyone knows they're not fantastic on wet, tricky descents and, you know, they're mountain climbers. And just till then, there haven't been any massive uh, mountain top finishes. So, you know, the boys were, um, were really, really focused on today. Uh, you know, like we said, we came up with a strategy a few days ago. It was, uh, it was a big risk. It was one of those, you know, all in moves, and uh, they've come off with it. So that was the plan, you know, on the Col d'Isoire for him to really go so far from the finish and really light it up. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was, um, we came up with it a few days ago, but. Uh, there was a lot of risk involved, um, but you know, uh, one of the Schleckies had to had to put it on the line for the other one, one of the brothers, and and he, and he put his hand up. <laughs> Look, there was so much headwind, you know, in the valley leading up to to the Col de Glibier. Was there any doubt in your mind when you know, I guess the reports would have been coming through, fair bit of head and crosswind, it was going to make it hard for one man on his own out there. Yeah, it was, but that was the then that was the other strategy was to put a couple of guys in a breakaway. Uh, hopefully there was going to be a breakaway and those guys would start, you know, riding as well and, you know, and like I said, it's not often everything kind of plonks itself into the position and things work out as you hope, but, uh, you know, we had Max and Houston in the front and, you know, they rode their asses off to the bottom of the climb. Well, incredible effort by the team, you know, in over the entire team, I guess, uh, today. Cadell Evans is still not that far behind, but of course, another big hilltop finish in Alpe d'Huez tomorrow. What are you expecting is going to happen with Cadell? And I guess, how much time do you really want to have on him leading into the time trial? Oh, look, the race is far from over. Um, you know, tomorrow is short. Uh, it's going to be one of the nastiest stages of any tour I've done, I think. It's, uh, it's going to be really critical. I mean... You know, Cadell's obviously strong. I haven't seen the summary of the race, but, you know, he was up there. Um, look, you know, it's still a really hard day tomorrow. And then the time trial, he's still, you know, can rip, uh, you know, God knows how much time out of the boys. So we'll just take it day by day.